So uh, I hope you can see my screen. Yes, very well. Good. Then let's proceed. So yes, um, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, our work on exploring spiritual values of forests in Europe and Asia is um, part of a multi-author paper, um, which also forms part of the Sincere project which is a Europe uh, Commission funded project focusing on how to enhance um, forest ecosystem services and the innovation thereof. Um, it's exploratory work uh, and it's based on expert knowledge from 18 interdisciplinary experts um, in 13 countries, three in Asia. So we have Japan, India and uh, Iran and then 10 in Europe. So, uh, so why did we decide to focus on spiritual values of forests? Well, uh, here in Europe, we saw a boom in um, the spiritual uh, or uh, non... Um, so, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble with my presentations as the Okay, now it's a bit better. So we uh, experienced um, a certain boom in the non-material forest ecosystem services, uh, such as funeral forests, or you can also call it natural burial sites, um, forest therapy, forest bathing, uh, which is actually quite a huge trend here in Europe at the moment, um, of course, originating from Japan. Um, but this is, of course, not new. Humans have had a close relationship with forests and have been intrigued by its magical nature actually since forever. And all societies also depend on forests for their spiritual development. So manifestations of this could, uh, for instance, be sacred um, natural sites or sacred groves. Some still exist today in some countries. And we also know that forests and trees are often um, central in, in myths and folklores. And again, this we see also today. So in films, maybe you notice this guy or even this guy. Um, and even though there is this connection between humans and nature on a spiritual level, um, actually there's quite a bit of a research gap on this. Um, Laban, for instance, calls um, spiritual values of forest as the neglected stepchildren of forest-based ecosystem services. So with our work, we really wanted to put a, the limelight on spiritual values and this interaction between nature and humans. So first we needed to think about what actually do we mean with spiritual values of forest and um, due to the limited time, I will not go too much into detail here, but what is uh, important to notice is that um, forest spirituality or forest spiritual values is of course uh, very subjective, um, which makes it a bit difficult to work with because it means different things to different people. And um, it isn't limited to religion, uh, although of course religion is a big part of it. But forest uh, spirituality could also simply be walking in the forest and having a feeling of spiritual renewal, um, not related to any religious aspects. Um, it can simply be in nature and you have this wow feeling or moment or having very strong emotions on, on forest issues. Um, and what is also important to know is that there are different activities which then triggers or manifest this um, spiritual values. Uh, and here the, the difference between uh, other activities or cultural um, ecosystem services become a bit murky. Uh, like I said, for instance, walking in the forest, which is of, of course a recreational value, but this can trigger then the spiritual value. And then um, what is very clear is that forest spiritual values result from the exchange between place, so nature, um, human, the community or an individual, including its cultural or um, religion or history. And then, of course, the activity or engagement with nature. And then perceptions matter. So how you see or perceive nature, um, this affects then how you act towards nature, uh, so how you manage it. And then this changes the landscape. And then this automatically then uh, in the end changes your perception again. So this interaction then between place, uh, activity, and human then brings me to the next part where we formed a hypothesis to think about spiritual values of forest and consists of four stages. 
these stages are non-linear um, and so not chronological. It's rather divided in grouping of common, common patterns that we saw in our certain case areas over time. Um, it's not exclusive, so you can have more than one stage at the same time happening in the same place. Maybe one is a bit more dominant than the other. So just to quickly explain it. So in the first stage you have where um, parispirituality is rather obvious. And this is for instance, where nature worshiping is still very dominant. Um, and here the main way of thinking is nature gives, nature takes. You need to have a respect towards nature. You need to be thankful for its gifts, maybe even give offerings. So from a European perspective, this would be more in the past where paganism or nature worshiping was very um, still common. Now there's not so many examples of this. One example could be the Sami people in Finland, uh, still a small um, indigenous minority group. So then the next stage, um, we call it taming of nature. And this is, uh, yeah, where humans try to tame nature um, to serve themselves, humans, and to serve um, a god. And this stage, uh, from a European perspective, this is, uh, and, and also from the other case, that is, was uh, when the advent of major organized religions came, so Christianity or Islam, um, and then they incorporated or replaced often nature worshiping, they changed the landscape, often they changed the landscape also with um, a religious, from a religious point of view, so often saying, yeah, we, God made us stewards of nature, and therefore we have the responsibility to use nature um, as is for instance the case in Christianity and Islam. Um, yeah so then they started controlling nature to for maybe to get timber from it, fuel wood, also for agroforestry and um, so we thus see still is some kind of a spirituality um, but it is starting to decline and then in the third stage um, this is where science and technology is used to optimize nature's management for the benefit of society. Here, forest spirituality is actually at a, at a low. Um, we see monofunctional of forest, and it's mainly for um, timber production. Legislation is put into place to regulate this. Uh, forest management plans are set up, forest schools are established, and we often see plantation forestry, which is maybe not the most spiritual place you can find. Uh, yeah, plantation forestry then to, to address this re uh, deforestation that happened in the second and in the beginning of the third stage. So you can actually talk about a kind of economic religion uh, preaching the gospel of efficiency, some, some reaches as a told this. And then in the fourth stage, so this is actually, um, yeah, kind of a reconnecting with nature, re-spiritualization of nature, you can also call it. Um, and this, uh, where society reunites with nature for its non-material benefits. Um, this is definitely visible in Europe um, and, and also Japan, uh, very much in the urban areas. And we think also it happens as a reaction or maybe even a kind of a sort of protest against the third stage of forest use. So where forests were places of production in this stage, uh, in the third stage, and to a certain extent also in the second stage, now in stage four, forests are places of consumption of spiritual values, of aesthetic values, um, and even recreation. As I said, this is uh, very often in, in um, urban populations where they try to escape also this urbanism. Um, so we move from monofunctional forest to multifunctional forest, um, and it also often goes hand in hand with environmental movements, and societies become more aware of the risks of nature or that nature faces um, as we see with more uh, climate change catastrophes become more visible. There's maybe even the realization that humans are after all not in control of nature and societies become more vocal um, on forest management topics. Uh, they are more emotional about forests. Um, yeah, and like I said, this is very much in, in the urban populations. So examples of these re-spiritualization um, could be people visiting the forest more often for um, activities such as forest bathing or forest therapy. Um, it could also be in Spain, for instance, in one of our case studies, there was an example where sacred groves are actually established now where society 
plant trees with a significant meaning. So maybe the oak tree representing strength or the cypress tree uh, representing immortality. And these groves then serves as a kind of a grateful contribute to nature, a place of seclusion where they can go to calm the mind and, and refresh the spirit. Um, another example could be some business opportunities. Of course, this raises some ethical issues if you really want to put a monetary value on spiritual values. But there are also examples, for instance, this funeral forest I mentioned in Germany. This is also very popular at the moment. Um, actually, since the, the first company started about 20 years ago, it's called Friedwald, which means you can kind of translate it to peaceful forest. And um, yeah, this is the biggest company of funeral forests. They have more than 70 stands uh, across Europe. But there are also smaller um, businesses uh, or even municipalities which engage in this trend. And um, then we also see policy mechanisms um, acknowledging the spiritual values. So um, in, in Europe, the Forest Europe Sustainable Forest Principles and Indicators was set up in, in this third stage where they focus on the um, more to enhance timber production also for future generations. But now they are also acknowledging um, explicitly um, spiritual values and then Sorry, Jean, I think you're probably running out of time okay, very soon yeah. I'm so then on my last up. slide so yeah just yeah. to wrap up so yeah. what does this mean for urban forestry we need to think about what are these drivers for uh, re-spiritualization so um, yeah it could be religion but it could also be secularization that people move away from religion and um, this climate change risks that people realize nature is fragile um, but definitely urbanization is one of the drivers of re-spiritualization. And um, we hope with our work that we can shed some light on the importance of this issue, that uh, spiritual values are then, or forests are then also taken into account when policies are made, when management plans are set up for also urban forests. Um, yeah, and then also to deal with trade-offs, because of course, if you go to the forest for to satisfy spiritual needs, you would probably want peace and quietness, but then you maybe have uh, um, mountain bikers uh, quickly going by. So, I mean, this raises a lot of issues. Uh, and also, as I mentioned, there's some ethical issues if you want to set a monetary value on this. But with our work, like I said, it's um, exploratory and it's just to, to shed some light on the importance of also the spiritual values. Yeah. Uh, and then I would conclude. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay.